Whoa. Yeah, here we go. It's another one of these. Freight Broker TV, FBTV podcast. My name is Mike. I'm your host. We get together usually once a week, but there's been a lot of things going on. Uh, we got, uh, we went from uh, Cox Internet, that's a story in itself, to fiber optic. And the fiber optic is doing great. And well, I'll tell you a little bit about our cock story. That's kind of wild. Also, some of you know, some of you maybe didn't know, but uh, back in, uh, well, a year ago, I uh, had a rotator cuff issue. And I fish, and I didn't do anything to take care of it last year. I uh, put a brace on it, taped it. But I, I fished, and it never had a chance to heal. Well, it just continually got worse and worse and worse. No surgery, but I finally broke down and went to the doctor. And they gave me a cortisone shot. And now, well, it ain't 100%, but it's a lot better than it was. My concern right now is what is it going to be like? What's it going to be like when that shot wears off? They say shot six weeks, six months. Whenever it wears off, we'll see what happens. All right, how are you doing today? Today, June 8th, it's Thursday. Today is Best Friends Day. Jelly-filled donut day. Boy, I miss those. Name your poison day. Now, when we say name your poison, <laughs> you know, if you've been to a, a bar, the bartender, hey, name your poison. What's your poison? That's not what this is about. This is about making decisions and choices. Name your poison. I don't know why it's got a negative context to the day, why they call it name your poison, unless most decisions and choices are the wrong ones. But anyway, it is what it is. All right, we got an impossible question today. 29% of Gen Z, Generation Z, say they have this goal For adulthood, what do you think that might be? Now, if you're kind of confused about Gen Z, the youngest Gen Zer would be 11 years old this year, while the oldest would be 26. So think along them lines, and uh, we'll be back uh, before the end of the podcast and give you the answer for that impossible question. All right, what are we doing today? We're going to be talking, we got some news here, and some of this news is just... Well, it is what it is. Got uh, fuel and spot rate updates we're going to be giving you today. And uh, a lot of other things as well. A lot more fun. But uh, we'll get to it when uh, we do. It's been a couple of weeks. I'm a little rusty. I feel a little, I feel rusty. But just stay with me. We'll, we'll get it here before it's all over today. All right. What is going on? Okay, Taltoa. Let's talk about that. I am the lead consultant with Taltoa, by the way. Uh, If you haven't been to our website lately, you should check it out. I know they've made some major updates and changes. Uh, Matter of fact, here in the last 24 hours, one of these changes is the... Hold on, I'll get the right button in a minute. One of these changes, I don't know why it does that. Whenever we bring something up, it brings another mic in. I I don't get that, but anyway... One of these changes, if you look here, the freight broker basic starts at $495. This is the lowest I've ever seen this. This includes on-demand essential training, three months in the Tatoa mentorship program, three months consulting, and it also includes Pago financing. Uh, the way that works, you make $195 down payment. After that, it's $60 to schedule your next session. Or, well, it's on demand. It's not live. It's on demand. Now, the live session is still available at the uh, same price. It used to be $695. It includes live. Uh, we, we've changed stuff up since the uh, first of the year. If you've been uh, following Tautua, These days, we are doing live training sessions on Monday, Wednesday, Friday in the mornings between 9 a.m. and noon. That would be Central Time. And on Tuesday and Thursday evenings between 6 p.m. and 9 p.m. Central Time. So if you've been wanting to get live training, 
but your schedule just wouldn't let you schedule in the mornings. Well, now you've got the option of evening training sessions as well. Also, something new that we're pretty proud of is the Tatoa Manual, Tatoa Freight Broker Training Manual. We had this available a few years ago, and we took it off the website. Well, it's it's back up now. You can get this, and let me show you where. Go to our website, Tatoa.com, T-A-L-T-O-A dot com. Let me bring it up. There, there we, we go. go. Now. I did it again. Anyway, uh, the Freight Broker Training Manual right there is available on Amazon. You've got your option, the digital download. Uh, It's good on Kindle, too, but they've got apps for that as well. You just download the app, and you're good to go. You don't have to have Kindle to be able to read it. But you've got the option of purchasing the hard copy. We call it hard copy. It's paperback, actually. Matter of fact, let me uh, show you. I've got it right here, Uh, the proof of it anyway this is what it is uh, uh can you see that it's uh it's kind of in a, a workbook type format it's not the workbook but it's i don't know if you can see it's got places uh there you go you see you can take notes and things of that nature so this is available via our website taltoa.com check it out we're really proud of it same it's the same manual the same information, training information that we ship to our clients. We just made it available through Amazon. So if you're, you've been thinking about getting into the industry, not wanting to spend a whole lot of money till you know if it's for you or not. Now you've got the opportunity. All right. What else is going on? <clears throat> oh, here's something in Atlanta. You know, this is, this is all over the place where uh, you see it in the news more and more where the record companies, Wrecker, W-R-E-C-K-E-R. They're kind of being jerks, if you want to get right down to it. They are towing vehicles that shouldn't be towed. They are putting boots on cars, charging, or trucks, as far as that goes, too, demanding an exorbitant rate charge fee to get them off and i also saw uh, a walmart parking lot where a company was putting something on the window the windshield of a truck where you uh, had to pay to get it off but there's a youtube video that shows you how to get it off without paying anybody some of this just going overboard well in atlanta it seems to be in epidemic proportions so an atlanta man is selling 50 dollars boot keys these boot keys well, unlock the uh, the boot from your vehicle, and away you go. Save you that uh, expensive fee to get it removed. Drivers who are fed up with getting booted in Atlanta are turning to a new product to avoid the pricey removal fees. The website ATL Boot Keys was recently started by Atlanta resident Christian Verrett. After he became frustrated with frequent vehicle booting while parking in the city. The website sells boot keys for different parts of the city based on which companies are doing most of the booting in that area. There are four different keys available for 50 bucks each. Or you can purchase a bundle of all four keys for 150 bucks. ATL boot keys had sold so far. About 600 boot keys. (laughs) Atlanta apparently tired of the boot. The people hate the boot, he said. He told uh, Fox at 5 Atlanta. The popularity of ATL boot keys even promoted the Atlanta Police Department, APD, to release a statement on the legality of the prices. APD says that it is not illegal to own a boot key. But using the boot key to remove a boot may result in charges, including tr- uh, criminal trespass, theft of services, theft by taking, or damage to property. However, APD also noted that the Atlanta Police Department does not intervene between motorists and private business owners 
when vehicles are booted in violation unless a criminal matter arises. So, there you go. If you're out in Georgia in the Atlanta area, tired of the boot, <laughs> you've, you've got a solution, the boot key. That website, ATL Boot Keys. <clears throat> All right, what else is going on? Uh, in the news, a uh, trucker charged after ignoring a sign. We got pictures. Show you these in a minute. Pennsylvania police charged a truck driver. Yeah, I, this is one of those stories that it's hard to believe, but it happened. And with the weird things going on in the world today, it, you can almost, you know, stuff like this years ago, it was like, come on, you're pulling my leg. Anymore, if, if, if it can, anything that you would have thought made up today, it's reality. And this is one of those things. Pennsylvania police charged a truck driver who allegedly drove around road closure signs and into a construction area, causing tens of thousands of dollars worth of damage last month. The driver was charged with felony criminal mischief from the charges that stem from an incident that occurred in the middle of May, May 15th in Mount Pleasant Township in Pennsylvania. Police say that shortly before 4 p.m., the driver, and this guy, he's not 21, 22 years old. He's in his 60s. That's what makes this so much weirder. Unless there's more to the story that we don't know about, which I don't see how there could be. The driver was driving a semi north on Route 18 when he came upon barriers and a road closure sign. Rather than turn around, police say that the driver drove around the barriers and, believe it or not, right into a patch of freshly poured concrete. And there you go. Can you believe that? That is unbelievable. And it had to do damage to the truck, probably. You would think. Maybe not. But look at that. That is just, for the life of me, I don't know why anybody would do that or how anybody could do that. I mean, they had to. Well, anyway, it is what it is. To me, you can see it. I mean, with, you take, well, it, it could be dry. You know, it could look dry in a way it would. You take the uh, tracks out. But anyway, the damage to the roadway cost more than $80,000 to repair, according to the report. But wait, <laughs> we've got more fun ahead. And this is embarrassing. I ride motorcycles, and I can't believe this either. You know, I drove trucks for years, and I ride motorcycles, rode motorcycles for years, too. And this one makes you scratch your head as well. Also on May 15th, same day, same day, about four hours after the truck driver drove a semi into the wet concrete, a man and wife were riding their motorcycle in the same area. I know you're saying, Mike, please say no, it isn't so. It is. Police say that the uh, wife moved the barrier so that her husband could proceed through the construction area. <laughs> Yeah, also became stuck in the wet, wet concrete. Yeah, this resulted in about $45,000 worth of damage, and there's no telling what kind of damage there was to that bike. Yep, they were also charged with felony criminal mischief. Isn't that just sad? <laughs> I mean, man. The Mount Pleasant uh, Police Department issued a statement following these two incidents. People. People, please pay attention to road signage. Road closed literally <laughs> means road closed. We have had not one but two incidents in the past five hours of vehicles driving through, around, and past multiple road closed signs. Citations will be issued. Your insurance will go up. And you delay construction for an already hectic project. Please help us by simply following signage. 
That is all. Thank you. Isn't that amazing? I got it. Look at this picture again. This motorcycle. That just blows me away. <sighs> Unbelievable. Why would anybody, why would anybody ignore the road closed sign and actually get off the bike and move barriers? Better yet, what's the deal with the truck driver? Did he have to stop his truck, get out, and move barriers as well? I don't say, but man, oh man. Right now, this is going to blow you away. <clears throat> Didn't me. This comes from uh, WSB TV. The video does. If, if you are listening to the podcast, you get a chance want to see the videos and the pictures we're putting up. You can go to YouTube our YouTube channel, Freight Broker TV. And you can uh, watch the podcast and see what we're talking about here. But if you're listening to the podcast, that's fine. We are on pretty much all the podcast apps and on YouTube, our YouTube channel, Freight Broker TV. YouTube.com forward slash Freight Broker TV. Anyway, a truck driver narrowly avoids getting pummeled by her own truck as a train runs into it. You ready for this? Here we go. All right, let's back up here a little bit. Let me back up. I don't know if you can see it, but that's, that's the driver right there. You see the driver just just right there in the grass, right before the truck hits it. The uh, the the peop the person taking the video, they're yelling at her, "Move, run!" <laughs> because this happens. Here we go. Let's watch it again. There he goes. He was yelling. Here comes the train. The truck is there. Ah, oh, and there they go. But the driver, boy, they she barely got out of there with the skin. She barely got out of there. Let's, let's watch this thing again. Look at that train. It was loaded, too. Oh, me, oh, my. And, 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 and uh, look here. Did she stop because she was worried about breaking that bar? Or was she hung up with her landing gear? I, I don't know. I don't think we have that information. But anyway, here, here it comes. Kaboom! Oh, every driver's nightmare. You know, I see this more and more and more. You know, if you watch YouTube, these videos are propping up all the time anymore. And I don't get it. I just don't get it. You know, that's one of those common sense things. Hey, if there's a train coming, it's best to stay away. <laughs> or not cross. You know, you know that you're, you're taught that. Matter of fact, you know, you can't get your CDL without knowing that information about a train track. But anyway, anyway, she narrowly avoided getting pummeled by her own truck. This video was filmed in Union City, Georgia uh, on some train tracks along Watson Street on Monday, this past Monday, June the 5th. As you saw in the video, a woman, apparently the truck driver, standing right next to the truck cab as a train approaches the truck from the uh, side. Someone across the street yells at the driver to watch out, and she begins running at the last second, just as the train smashes into the truck, stuck on the tracks. The woman disappeared from view for a second, but can later be seen running. No injuries were reported, but she sure did come close to uh, meeting her maker. Now, if you're wondering what all that powder was from, she was hauling cat litter. That, that was a heavy load. That's what created all the uh, dust. I'd like to know more about that. What got her hung up there? Was she actually worried about breaking the the uh, landing thing or the uh, bar that comes down? I, don't, I forget what it's called. Or did her landing gear get stuck? Let's watch it again. Maybe we can... Uh, I don't know. I don't 
I don't think her landing gear was stuck. It looks it looks like it's high. It's at a high point. And if she had the landing gear all the way up, it could have been, who knows, but uh I think she just panicked because the bar the, the bars were coming down. And instead of just driving on through it, those things bend, you know. They 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 will let you get across. Unless she just didn't feel like she had enough time. Crazy. Boom. Cat litter. Boy, oh boy. How do you explain that? Uh, hello, dispatcher. <laughs> You're not going to believe this. I was hit by a train. <laughs> oh, that's everybody's worst nightmare. Back in the day, uh, we're not going to get into that story. That's for another day, but it, it uh, well, not even going to go there. We'd be here for the next hour talking about that. All right. What is else is going on in the world? Birthdays today. If it's your birthday, you're in pretty good company. Frank Lloyd Wright was born on this day back in 1867, an American architect, if the name sounded familiar. Couldn't put two and two together. Charles C. Beck, he's a cartoonist, responsible for Captain Marvel, born on this day back in 1910. Robert Preston, I like this guy, he was a good actor, enjoyed him. Matter of fact, I he, well, he was in Music Man and The Last Starfighter, he was Centauri. And that last Starfighter, it was just a fun, a fun uh, sci-fi movie. But anyway, he was born on this day back in 1918. Jerry Stiller, Ben Stiller's dad, Seinfeld, King of Queens, born on this day back in 1927. Joan Rivers, born on this day back in 1933. Nancy Sinatra, Frank's daughter. These boots are made for walking Sinatra, born on this day back in 1940. Don Grady, name sound familiar? Remember my three sons? He was uh, Robbie. He was born on this day back in uh, 1944. Today in history, the first commercially made ice cream is sold in New York City. How do they know? I mean, seriously, how do they really, really know that somebody someplace else didn't sell it first? Did they even have, well, apparently they did, refrigeration? I mean, come on, this is June, early June, New York City. They had to have something going on. They had to have some type of refrigeration to make it frozen. How? I mean, let's go to Back to the Future 3. <laughs> Did you see the contraption Doc had for making one ice cube? That was in the 18, what, 60s, something like that. 1861, Tennessee succeeds from the Union. 1970, Walt Disney graduates from Benton High School. I wonder what he think today about Disney World. Mickey Mantle, today back in 1995, received a liver transplant at a Dallas hospital. Didn't take. He was around for another couple of months. This date back 21 years ago, Lennox Lewis kept his heavyweight title by stopping Mike Tyson in the eighth round. Their fight was in Memphis, Tennessee. And while we are on the subject of boxing, one year later, George Foreman inducted into the International Boxing Hall of Fame. Known for boxing and known for the George Foreman Grill. Do you have one of those? Do you have one of those? I had one. Didn't care for it. Took all the juice out of the burger, if you ask me. But it is what it is. All right, there you go. Strange laws. Voters beware in Texas. It's illegal to carry a sword or a spear to a polling place. Now you know. All right, what else? Uh, fuel and spot rate update for the week of June 5th. Going back to Monday, fuel prices. Diesel down $0.06 cents from last week, down to uh, $3.80 per gallon. Gasoline down $0.03 cents from last week, three fifty four per gallon. Spot rates from last week. Something good to uh, smile about. Van rates are up 1.2%. Flatbed up 0.9%. Refrigerated up 0.4%. Spot rates from last month up $0.02 cents for dry vans up to 209 Still way too low. 
flatbed up a penny up to 266 refrigerated no change there from last month still at 246 per mile fuel surcharges flatbed 51 cents drive-in 42 cents per mile refrigerated 46 cents per mile overall average fuel surcharge per mile 46 cents all right what else do we got to do uh, things you might want to know <laughs> kind of getting off topic with the fbtv podcast we're talking about everything transportation news we are talking about things that have nothing to do with transportation such as the Bud Light protest has cost it the number one spot in the U.S. beer sales. The new number one most popular beer in America based on sales. I'm going to pronounce this wrong, probably. Modelo Especial. Chris Lick, chairman and CEO of CNN Worldwide, he's out. He tried to bring CNN back to mainstream, make it more... Walter Cronkyish. Well, when he did the uh, Trump thing, the Trump Town Hall on CNN, that was the beginning of the end for him. Everybody turned it against him. He's out. All right, Microsoft delay, uh, agreed to pay twenty million dollars to settle charges that it violated children's privacy rights when they signed up for its Xbox game system. Yeah, there's no telling what Microsoft and Facebook and Twitter before Musk did that we don't know about, never know about. Who's the 20 million going to? The government, probably. If you're a Perry Mason fan, you've been watching the uh, Perry Mason reboot on HBO. It's going away. Two seasons. It's gone. And yes, we've got a new Mission Impossible movie coming to movie coming to theaters this summer, but uh, filming on Mission Impossible: Dead Reckoning Part Two. Well, it's put on hold. Got that writer strike going on. North Carolina, if you're in North Carolina, give me a heads up. What's going on out there? Seven earthquakes in the past two weeks. What's what's going on? They're all within a half, no, a mile of each other. All within a mile of each other. That's pretty wild. Danny Bonaducci, Danny from the Partridge family. He was a radio disc jockey. He's been around quite a bit. Two-hour shunt brain surgery. This past Monday, when his plan, he'll be released from the hospital any day. Then he's going to spend three to four weeks resting and recovering at home. And in food news, McFood news, on the way to your neighborhood McDonald's in the near future, the cheesy bacon jalapeno corda pounder. I'll be looking for that. I don't sound bad, actually. I quit eating at McDonald's a long time ago. Why? Well, watch that movie, Super Size Me. It's a documentary. You'll probably find it on YouTube. It's it's uh, pretty much free. On YouTube, I believe. If not, I think it's on Netflix. You can find it. It's pretty much out there. Watch it. Super Size Me. All right. Ah, here's something. Headlines. Truck spills coffee creamer on road, causing backups on I-95. Cleanup caused delays on I-95. I'll get it here in a minute. Cleanup caused delays on I-95 North in Florida after a coffee creamer truck crashed and spilled its contents on the road. The truck was blocking the left lanes. A spokesperson for the Florida Highway Patrol told the Action News, J-A-X, that the truck has been difficult to move because the trailer carrying the creamer ruptured when it was lifted, causing more spillage. Tanker? Probably. Probably so. All right. You think speeding tickets are high here? Listen to this one. This guy got a speeding ticket for $129,000 American. The minimum fine for speeding in Finland is six euros. The maximum, that's a much different story. Why? Because Finland uses a progressive system pegged to a driver's wealth, which is how the very wealthy, this guy's name is, if I get it right, Anders Wickloff, just received a fine of 
thousand euros, or about one hundred and twenty-nine thousand American. He says, "I really regret the matter." He was stopped while driving on the Island Islands, an autonomous part of the country, roughly speaking. But uh, police say he was doing about fifty miles per hour in a thirty mile per hour zone. The penalty is calculated on the driver's income along with the seriousness of speeding. Now, that'd be one thing if he got it this first time doing it. You know, you tell me my speeding ticket is $129,000. I don't care how much money I got. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be sick. But this guy, he's done it before. He's paid fines of $102,000 before and $68,000 before. He just isn't learning wouldn't that be terrible if he ends up going broke and he comes back and thinks, man, I could have had, what, two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars in the bank had I not sped? <laughs> Let's wrap it up on this uh, section. Don't let me forget to do the uh, Today's Impossible Question with Gen Z. Because I know with that question, your brain's going all over the place when I said, you know, oh, it's going to be 26, your youngest 11, on what they uh, have a goal. They have this goal for adulthood. 29% of them have this go. We'll get to that in a minute. <clears throat> anyway, a driver takes a wrong turn. He's going to be arrested at the Canadian border. A 60-year-old American driver was arrested last week after he took a wrong turn and ended up at the Canadian border with a huge quantity of cannabis and over $600,000 in his car. The RCM Royal Canadian Mounted Police said in a news release that the man was following GPS coordinates that were entered incorrectly when he mistakenly ended up in the border lineup at Canada's Rainbow Bridge border crossing in Niagara Falls, Ontario. As he did not have his passport with him, he was subject to an inspection. During the inspection, Canadian border officials found almost 400 pounds of cannabis, which police said is valued at between 269000 and 539000 dollars U.S., and they also found the uh, $600,000 in cash. Think they're going to keep it? Hey, if it was America, they would. Read about that all the time. You take an airplane from point A to point B, or even drive, and you can pull it over, and they found the police find that uh, you got a lot of cash. They're going to automatically assume that you did something illegal to have that cash. And they are going to take it. And good luck getting it back. We did a story here a while back where that happened to somebody uh, going out to Arizona, maybe, something like that, to uh, buy a big truck. He had $30,000 or something like that in cash on him. Police took it. Took him a long time, but he finally got it back. All right. Today's impossible question, wrapping this up on this uh, Thursday. June 8th. Hard to believe it's June already, isn't it? 29% of Generation Z say they have this go for adulthood. What is it? Become, become a CEO, a chief executive officer. 29%. I wonder what the other 71% want to do. Who knows? All right, Morning Coffee is going to return. Morning Coffee with Tautua. We're going to get regular again with the uh, podcast. Keep tuning in. Please, if you would, if you are listening to the podcast, uh, give us five stars. Subscribe. That helps us grow. Same thing on YouTube. If you're watching this on YouTube, you know, thank you so much for watching. But, you know, subscribe. Hit that bell. And if you made it this far, anytime you watch any of our v uh, videos all the way through, that helps the channel grow as well. Tell your friends. We'll be back soon. Uh, though There should be a, uh, well, let's not promise tomorrow's Friday. Monday for sure. We're going to have a, a morning coffee, morning coffee returns on uh, well, the podcast as well as YouTube. Anyway, have a great Thursday. If I don't talk to you before, have a great weekend. Unless, of course, you've made other plans. See you soon.